Anyone with one eye can see that Zelda Tears of the Kingdom is a complete ripoff of Fortnite Battle Royale. Are you having a laugh? Are you having a laugh? But hey, what's going on guys? Today we're going to be looking at another game review or critique or whatever you want to call it. Basically, this guy here claims that um, Tears of the Kingdom copied Fortnite and the reasons are completely ridiculous. But let's go ahead and get straight into it. I don't want to waste any more time. One of the most popular games in the late 2000s, everybody's been playing Fortnite for a few years now, and it's given Zelda and Nintendo more time to pretty much copy, steal, cheat, whatever you want to call it, and pull things directly from Fortnite Battle Royale and put them into Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. You know, that boat and this guy have something in common, and that's that they're both complete penises. I'm going to be talking about the map, the mechanics, pretty much everything that you need to know about Fortnite is going to be in Zelda. And many active Fortnite players have been bringing this up across the Fortnite community, but I haven't seen anybody bring it up amongst the Zelda and Nintendo community. That's funny because I've never seen a single person ever bring this up. The only type of person who would bring something like this up is a person who's been like kicked in the head by a horse. So I figured I would do my part and share with you 20 things that Zelda and Nintendo have stolen straight from Fortnite and Epic Games. And let's start with all the obvious one, the flying, right? The glider that is portrayed in Zelda Breath of the Wild and now Tears of the Kingdom is pretty much a direct ripoff from Fortnite Battle Royale. Yeah, this is just blatant bullshit because in 2014, Breath of the Wild, which is the prequel to this game had the glider in its beta state and Fortnite didn't come out into beta until 2017 so yeah complete horse shit. When you jump out of the bus you pull your iconic glider and Fortnite was one of the first games to show the glider off. Ah uh, yes because there was never a glider in a video game before 2017's Fortnite. And now many games have started to copy them one of them being Zelda Breath of the Wild, but that's not the biggest mechanic, right? What makes Fortnite so unique? Well, it's obvious. It's the building that goes with the play style, and that's exactly what Zelda Tears of the Kingdom has done. They have implemented, not only did they copy them in Breath of the Wild with the map and the gliding, but then they go ahead and steal the mechanic, the building mechanic that makes Fortnite Fortnite. They steal it right from underneath them and now you can actually build in Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. It's almost comical how similar these two things are between these two games is they're basically stealing straight from Fortnite. And if So does that mean every single video game that has like a building mechanic is just a rip off of each other? Basically every single game with building is just a rip off of Minecraft? Is that really the point you're trying to make here? Roblox, Ark, Valheim, Fortnite, Tears of the Kingdom are all just ripoffs of each other. Also, it works completely differently. In Fortnite, you build to protect yourself from other players and to get the high ground on them. In Tears of the Kingdom, you build things to solve puzzles. Not even relatable, bro. Try again next time. If you say that this is a mechanic that's a, it's not it's not a, amongst many games. This is a fighting game that has a building mechanic. These are the only two, and it just so happens that. Fortnite basically took over Zelda Breath of the Wild and now Zelda Tears of the Kingdom is copying Fortnite to try to take back that spot as the number one game. Yeah, I mean, that's just not true. Because Zelda Tears of the Kingdom is a single player story focused game based on exploration and Fortnite is a battle royale shooter game, so not really the point you want to make. Zelda Tears of the Kingdom is more in an offline game type thing, and Fortnite, you have to have an internet connection. It's completely different. One's PvE, one's PvP. This video is just complete monkey shit. This video's quality is on par with something that I'd siphon out of a giraffe's asshole. Now, another issue that I see that is very similar is the maps on these games. If you look at them, they're both big, giant islands surrounded by water. In the top corner, you have giant islands surrounded by water. If I'm not mistaken, there was a game that came out in 2002, a Zelda game, by the way, that was based around giant islands surrounded by water. It was called The Wind Waker, and that came out about, I don't know, 15 years before Fortnite, so this is not really the point you want to be making here, Chief. have a fire or desert area. In the bottom, you have some snow. You have some grassy areas. It's very similar. Both maps have volcanoes. 
Volcanoes have been in video games for decades now, bud. Both mouths, maps have- I like how he accidentally said mouth and he just said, Okay, we're gonna leave it in the subtitles, bro. Like, this dude is lazy as bro. Iconic peaks. It is almost to a T that these maps are almost one-to-one -one representations of each other. Yeah, I don't think so. And by the way, the Fortnite map changes every, like, four weeks, so I don't think it's really comparable, but go ahead, bro. Now, that's just the first three issues. And guys, there's 17 more issues that come along with this game. And it's almost insane that Nintendo is not being sued by Epic Games by this yet. Because we know Epic Games did sue Apple for not being in the App Store. Now, I'm not a legal advice. I'm not a paralegal. I'm not an attorney. The reason uh, Apple was beefing with Epic is because of, a, I think it was like a 30% fee that one of the... Uh, participants were not willing to pay and it had nothing to do with the games being similar plus one's a fucking cell phone company and one's a video game how is this comparable at all i'm not a lawyer so if there's a nintendo rep watching this an epic games rep watching this i just want to make this clear i'm not giving any advice i'm not saying anybody should sue anybody i'm just simply pointing out the similarities that i see amongst these things now obviously the combat is combat yes indeed the combat is very combat you can both shoot arrows both games fortnite has arrows zelda has arrows yeah and the ocarina of time which was released in like 1990 something also had arrows does that mean fortnite copied that game fortnite has pickaxes and swords obviously zelda has swords and zelda has had swords before the 2000s so once again it's just not gonna work man and obviously, as Zelda, you have to switch weapons and upgrade weapons just like you do in Fortnite. There are different variations of the weapons, green, blue, purple, and gold. Now, some would say that's a average mechanic for a game, which I would say, touche. But you know what has been very unique to Fortnite? Floating islands. Meet Kevin. Ah, uh, yes, because there were never floating islands in video games before Fortnite. If I can recall, I remember the original, like, Super Mario Brothers having fucking floating islands. Kevin, the floating island in the Fortnite game is iconic. It's one of the key locations of the game. I mean, not anymore, and it hasn't been here since, like, 2018, so... And, of course, Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. First off, they don't have any floating things, and then the next season, or the next game, they just have floating things everywhere. He just put a picture of the Legend of Zelda Skyward Swords floating island from 2012 to try to prove his point. Like, Fortnite has been having floating islands, been having floating points of interest, and now, it's just now that Zelda Tears of the Kingdom is bringing that in. Because Zelda Tears of the Kingdom is trying to copy Fortnite when Fortnite has these abilities that you can eat things and start to float. Now Zelda has these things where they just float in the sky. It's just very oddly peculiar to me that not only have we never seen this in the game before, but once we see it in Fortnite, then it starts popping up everywhere else. Funny, once again, considering there was a game in 2012 called the uh, Sky Word Sword. Now, another thing that I see so similar with this game, as you know, the mechanic with Fortnite is a storm closes in on you. And if you've ever played Breath of the Wild, you know it's storming all the time. It's almost, it's it's so ironically close that it's not ironic. And that the storms, in both, there are storms in both games. Now, that's 10, right? That's 10. Because a circle collapsing in on you called a storm and a fucking thunderstorm are the same thing, am I right? Ten things, and just after those ten points, you would say, wow. You know what, he's right about this, I am saying wow. I'm, I'm amazed at how shit this video is. I mean, my videos are shit too, but they're not this shit. This guy has a point, and these next ten, these next ten points are going to be more insane. They're going to be, they're literally going to blow your mind. Obviously, let's start with maybe the most obvious one of both. In Fortnite, it is just a battle royale. There is no story. Zelda Breath of the Wild, there is no story. It's funny that you say that because like at the start of the game, when you go to Kakariko Village, they lay out the story of the game for you. And there's no way you can miss or skip it. So yeah, bullshit. 
Like, both games literally don't have the story. You can literally do whatever you want. Isn't it oddly peculiar that both games do not have a story? Not only do they not have a story, they both have towns, castles, and points of interest. As you can see, this large castle in Fortnite, there's a large castle in Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Okay, and in the original Super Mario Brothers, there's a castle. What's your point? Oh, and by the way, the Mario Brothers was made by the same company as this game. There are points of interest across both maps that you want to see and explore. Now, some people would say that's similar, but not the same. Uh, so let's just, uh, let's just look back at gaming history. There was never a point before 2017's Fortnite where you could explore. But what about the beast? Look at the beast between Fortnite and Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. They're almost the same. Now this, I'm, I'm not even joking, like this right here. Look at this, Fortnite Rock Family. And then what do you see in Zelda Breath of the Wild? Rock Enemies. Bro, come on. I mean, how, 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 how? Today, Junior? As for his point. Today, Junior? How? Can you just steal enemies from Fortnite and put them in Zelda Tears of the Kingdom? It's it's almost unfathomable that they're getting away with this. Also, you can destroy things in Fortnite. You can cut down trees in Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Yeah, but in Fortnite, you're using it to get resources to help you in PvP battles. In Tears of the Kingdom, you're using it to get wood for a campfire. In Fortnite, you can literally go anywhere. You have free reign. So do you. In Zelda okay so we've literally gotten to a point where because you can go anywhere in Fortnite it means that Tears of the Kingdom copied it because you can go anywhere in that game this is the dumbest this dude has to be trolling I have a feeling this guy's just like with me Tears of the Kingdom Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, they have shrines and puzzles. You think that would be unique to the audience you think that would be unique to the Nintendo game but actually no Fortnite Creative has so many puzzles. Alright, you know what? I'm done.